Hello, I'm Hannah Caterin. My pronouns are she, they, and I am the assistant curator at the Fraley Museum of Art at the University of Virginia. The Fraley Museum stands on the territory and homelands of the Monacan Nation. Welcome to Curatorial Clips, short videos by curators at the museum and our faculty colleagues on works in the collection or our areas of interest. Today, I will talk briefly about American feminist body artist Hannah Wilkie's performalist self-portraits. Hannah Wilkie was born Arlene Hannah Butter in New York City in 1940, and as a child showed an early interest in photography and art making. A prolific artist, Wilkie worked in several different mediums, including sculpture, performance, video, photography, painting, and drawing. Her work utilized both abstraction, realism, and documentary methods to visualize the femme experience and explore themes of sexuality, eroticism, and feminism. It is important to note that Wilkie's investigation of these themes was greatly influenced and at times limited by her white, thin, middle-class privilege. While Wilkie worked in many different mediums, this curatorial clip will focus solely on her lifelong project of photographic self-portraits. Wilkie coined the term performalist self-portrait to describe photographic work she created and directed others to photograph. Wilkie began performing and having herself photographed nude in 1970 after her mother's mastectomy. Wilkie's self-portraits were continually the subject of controversy, resulting in claims that her work was unsuccessfully feminist, narcissistic, and trivial. These criticisms dominated the reception of Wilkie's work from the 1970s until the end of her life. The introduction of Wilkie's body into her work prompted an extensive valuation of her physical appearance that would appear in appraisals of her art for the rest of her career. From the very first appearance of Wilkie's body in her work, these valuations would establish a binary between Wilkie's perceived physical beauty that stood to contradict her artistic practice. This binary was first created by an art review published in Art Forum in, 1947, in 1974, and then adopted and reinforced by the prevailing feminist art critic of the time, Lucy Lippard. In this performalist self-portrait, titled Hannah Wilkie, Super Tea Art, Wilkie restages a performance she did at The Kitchen, a nonprofit arts organization in New York, in November of 1974. For the piece, Wilkie stood on a small pedestal, dressed only in high heels, with a large white tablecloth draped around her. She held a series of poses while transforming the fabric from a toga-like toga robe into a small garment resembling underwear. Wilkie described the work as a crucifixion the different poses representing a transformation from Mary Magdalene to Christ. However, Hannah Wilkie's Super Tea Art dealt with more than just the crucifixion of Christ. It addressed crucifixion itself, the crucifixion of Wilkie as a, quote, super tart, unquote, whose physical appearance is hypersexualized and di discredits her artistic practice. Wilkie often utilized wordplay, as in the title of this work, in order to prompt viewers to question stereotypes and poke fun at the art world. This work, titled SOS Starification Object Series, consists of 28 performalist self-portraits of the artist, completed in 1975. The images are arranged in a grid pattern resembling Hannah Wilkie Super Tea Art, yet the SOS Starification Object Series images do not progress in a sequential way. Rather, the viewer encounters yet another overwhelming, seemingly endless display of Wilkie's image. Wilkie performs a vast array of poses throughout the 28 photographs. She presents herself in various stages of undress and utilizes different props. Small sculptures made out of chewing gum symbolizing starification scars are attached to Wilkie's fingernails, forehead, cheeks, chin, breasts, and back.
throughout the SOS images, Wilkie both adverts her gaze from and addresses the viewer. In some images, she performs a coy, modest pose, covering her chest with her arms. In others, she stands confidently, bare chest revealed, her face covered in gum sculptures, her hands on her hips, or thumbs slung in the belt loops of her jeans. She smiles vibrantly, or places one finger seductively in her mouth. Wilkie enacts and at times exaggerates different femininities throughout each pose. In some images, she is active and engaging, flirtatious and seductive, and in others, reserved and passive, shy and modest. The images embody the spectrum of performed femme sexuality while addressing the labors of femme beautification processes. SOS Starification Object series provoked some of the most severe criticism any of Wilkie's work received. In these criticisms, the art world's preoccupation with Wilkie's physical appearance is most obvious. Wilkie viewed the belief, illustrated by the reception of her work, that a woman's physical appearance exists in a binary with their artistic merit as a widespread social affliction. The SOS series was a manifestation of the effects of this dichotomy. It was a call for change and an admission that help was needed. The SOS photographs were used by Wilkie to explore her own problematic ideas of femininity and beauty. Although many critics of the SOS series focus on Wilkie's use of eroticism, they fail to acknowledge the complexity of this work, its examination of the roles femme individuals are meant to play, and its comment on the marking of the feminine as damaged or wounded. In 1977, the Center for Feminist Art Historical Studies in Los Angeles mounted an exhibition in conclusion of a two-year project titled, What is Feminist Art? The exhibition was held at the Women's Building in Los Angeles. Wilkie, among many other women artists, was invited to contribute a work of art. She submitted a poster titled Marxism and Art, Beware of Fascist Feminism. The work consists of an image of Wilkie taken from the SOS series, placed between the text Marxism and Art, Beware of Fascist Feminism. The work intended to confront criticism like lip arts and oppose the divisions that arose in feminist art criticism in the late 1970s. With this work, Wilkie position, positions herself as a feminist against prescriptive feminism and argued that discriminations based on ideals of beauty and femininity, and femininity are as damaging from women as they are from men. Wilkie challenged the idea of a feminism that stipulates how a woman should look or behave. In Marxism and Art, Beware of Fascist Feminism, Wilkie wanted to make clear how harmful a dogmatic and prescriptive feminism is by re-employing the symbol of the gum sculptures as wounds of femininity and scarring. Following the creation of Marxism and Art, Wilkie created another set of performalist self-portraits titled So Help Me Hannah in 1978. The photographs were taken at an abandoned school building in Long Island City, which would eventually become MoMA's PS1 gallery. Wilkie roamed the halls, bathrooms, basement, classroom, and rooftop of the building wearing nothing but high heels and carrying a toy gun. Throughout the images, Wilkie is shown in defeat, losing a battle with prescriptive feminism, which continues to reinforce the binary of visual prejudice she sought, she sought to escape. In continuing to use her body and beauty in her art, Wilkie is refusing to submit to those who deem her art superfluous, but her body also displays the scars of the battle revealing the pain caused by defeat. Following So Help Me Hannah, criticism of Wilkie's performalist self-portraits began to appear more often in relation to writings supporting anti-essentialist feminism. The divisions within feminist artistic practices became more evident as artists, theorists, and critics began publishing essays at the start of the 1980s. Anti-essentialist practices start to be privileged. Body art is seen as essentialist and, dis and dismissed on the grounds of its lack of political effectiveness. Through the So Help Me Hannah images, Wilkie performs her death 
at the hands of the dichotomy of the beautiful woman and serious artist first imposed on her at the beginning of her career. Wilkie's last performalist self-portrait series, titled Intravenous, was exhibited posthumously in New York in 1994. The exhibition displayed Wilkie's last self-portraits taken, taken with the assistance of her partner while she was dying of lymphoma. These images had a powerful effect on the art world's perception of Wilkie and generated praise and respect for the artist from some of the very same critics that rejected her earlier work. Wilkie's presentation of herself in the Intravenous series removed all accusations of exploitation and narcissism from its reception. While the response to her work changed, Wilkie's project remained the same. Up until the end of her life, she utilized her own body in her performalist self-portraits. Through the Intravenous series, Wilkie's naked, cancer-ridden body was seen as brave and powerful. For some, it changed their view of Wilkie's earlier work. This reception, which retroactively sought to celebrate Wilkie, overlooked the earlier claims of narcissism and superficiality that her work received. For some, it was seen as establishing a narrative, explaining Wilkie's enacted, at times exaggerated, femininity in her earlier performalist self-portraits. Critics argued Wilkie imposed this narrative after the fact, denying that she had been actively pursuing this kind of artistic discourse since the 1970s. The dismissive criticism of Wilkie's early work demonstrates that the divisions within feminist art criticisms of the 1970s and 80s were not so far removed from the patriarchal structures they sought to reject. The posthumous celebration of the Intravenous series does not retroactively revalue Wilkie's previous work. Instead, it reinforces the principles of visual prejudice that her work was always concerned with and seeking to visualize. Again, it is important to remember that Wilkie's model of visual prejudice is limited to her experience as a cisgender, white, thin woman. Wilkie's art is powerful and challenging. It raises difficult questions about beauty and femme bodies. The importance of Wilkie's work lies in its engagement and response to the limited criticisms her performalist self-portraits received before her death. The work prompts viewers to examine and challenge narrow and prescriptive representations of feminism, femininity, and the femme experience. <laughs>